Okay, so uh, I've made it to the bottom of the garden and uh, and had the deep joy of finding that one of the cats had made it to the bottom of my garden, right in my sitting position. So I've just spent the last five minutes uh, removing some offending stuff from the bottom of my shoe. Oh, I really do. I actually like cats. I just wish there was some humane way of stopping them from completely and utterly destroying my garden. I'm sure other people suffer from this. But I can understand why people get so aggravated over cats sometimes. Anyway, I um, thought I'd show you this one. Um, this is that, that fun forest that, uh, that I did out of um, the maple seedlings. Um, as I say, these are all now in their, what are we, 2014? They're yeah, all at least seven years, seven to eight years old. All, all were little seedlings at the same time and the different growth habits are down to some of them are in nursery beds longer, some of them in pots longer. Um, so it just goes to show, but I'm not quite ready. Um, I was going to do a little trim on this one. Um, just take some tips off. Quite happy, just keep some shape. Um, this is more about silhouette pruning. Um, I do my main pruning for, for maples um, in the... Uh, in the winter so I'm just literally having a look see if there's any um, offending bugs or anything on them that might need some spray applied take some tips off um, we've definitely got and if you can see here our favorite little friend there little black aphid these have been sprayed two three times um, they just get everywhere you do have a look underneath the back of the leaves here there's a whole host in there so just get that soapy solution um, and then uh, spray them on but what we do want to get is a good set of um, light to be able to get into the, the canopy this isn't a bad example so I'm not I'm not really thinking too much about shape or, or designs here some obvious inner you know where you definitely don't want buds being developed you don't want it to waste energy in places so i'll just go in and clear up around the uh, the the branch crotches um, yeah and i'll just go around oh look see they're everywhere absolutely everywhere um so i'll give them a good spray but if you've got too much too much foliage there, just opposing branches. I had a um, handlebar situation where this branch was growing from there, so we've got one opposite it, so it's just picking the right one. And doing some natural pruning decisions like that at this stage makes it easy to. Uh, it's full of the little beggars. I think, yeah, um, there's no. I mean, there are rules about pruning, but there are so many really good top quality. Uh, instructional videos out there about pruning what to do I'm worried about the bugs um, I just want to bring this back into shape and get rid of some real obvious defects it was nearly potted this year so I certainly don't want to go to town it's certainly not going to get defoliated or anything like that um, and I'll just go around and get rid of obvious issues with it. Don't know where the giraffes came from. Don't know if they're... There we go. I just want to be able to see your branches. So you've got two. A level there, a level there, a level here, and then obviously a level up here. Um, I don't want this to be growing up higher. I mean, these are going to be the thicknesses, so we're not looking to get any development now in the actual ratio of um, trunk sizes um, so it's just now about letting it slowly age uh, as I say again I'm just picking some obvious defects but I want to clear clear some space and allow light to get in there freely um, without taking off too much And as I say that, you watch me just take off more and more and more. I've got some smaller growth coming out of a junction here. 
So we'll just clean that up a bit. Aphids everywhere. And they will, if you don't if you don't get on top of them, they will suck the life out of your trees. And as you get higher up, obviously you're looking the the, the length, the number of internode internodal branches that will reduce so you'll have them coming up further here okay. and you'll, you will generally notice that your pruning will um, will fit in nicely with your debugging because the majority of the aphids will uh, congregate at the end of these uh, growing growing tips simply because that's the nicest part it's all still young and fleshy and that's what they like eating or sucking on I don't know you know, as it gets further down, it's harder and and less wholesome, I'd imagine. It's very chaotic in here. this together I, I had no idea we we're gonna have this sort of success with it even now you know I think I think it's some lovely love it's beautiful this has still taken eight years eight years of development um, lots of work to get it to what you know at a, a pre bonsai pre bonsai forest plantation in this lovely Dawn Isaac primitive pot I think she calls it bark scraped but yeah that's all I'll give it a spray um, and I tend to find it I won't show you too much maples because I've got so many to do but that's that's really it it's it's almost personal choice the good thing is is that I'll do r the major work the major work will be in the November time um, but this is just about keeping it in check and just distribution of energy so where you've got a lot of growth going and you want to get something lower down cut back that certainly if you're doing tridents yeah you anyway, know let's have a look at something else Okay, just so you can see my lovely ugly mug again. This here is uh, the Forsythia, which you've seen on the, um, the Spring Parade, um, but it's also one of my older, it's probably one of my first um, uh, nursery plant um, projects, um, way, way back in 2015. Um, again, lovely, lovely Dawn Isaac. That's low, we've got an A-wax, paddy wax, going over the top. Yeah, we're quite quite close to a lot of the uh, air bases in Lincoln, so the sound of uh, aircraft is. Uh, look at that! All those bugs feeding. Ugh. All I'll do with this um, is is take it back down to one or two. The size, how I like it, is how I like it. So I'm just gonna, literally going to take it back. Um, we've got. I don't want. I'm going to be quite harsh on this now, so I'll just take it back to two or three sets of leaves, but I normally go back to two. And there we go. Take all the growing tips off. And you are, this is where you d just definitely bring it back to shape. Um, you want to add, you want to make sure it's continuing to grow, because while it's growing, it's, uh, it's living. Sounds a very, very weird saying to make. Have a look again for bugs or anything under the leaves, general health. I mean, this is probably the first point of the year where you're going to see it get rid of these old flower bugs. Dead stub there. Like that. So. Yeah, birds obviously happy with what I'm doing. Another stub here. Stub up there. And so you're just doing the clean up. Um, it's not a lot of growth there yet so I'll let that go uh, I mean this will get pruned three or four times through this growing season there they're very very prolific so it is it's just about bringing it back to shape so I only want two sets of leaves up on the top and I say this pruning will Will cause it to send out another another flush. Some stuff lower down here. 
And the same, same reasons, you're looking for any health issues, but mainly looking to clear it out. So you get a nice, nice flow of air through it. As the bird agrees with me. And I'm removing just some occasional leaves from different parts, normally just to open up. There we go. I mean, from that, that perspective, I'll do all I'll do is do a little bit of cleaning up now. Yeah, so now it's just, let's get rid of some of these, uh, the Scottish moss. Pull those out, clean up around. Got some of that ragwort, see if there's any roots or, ooh, or anything causing issues. Probably due uh, a reed pot. I can see there's some roots here. They're obviously already starting to wrap round. I think this is one of those ones where it was a 50-50 um, call on whether I did a reed pot on it this year. Really interesting this one. I do like this. Flowers so beautifully every year. Um, this will probably get a, um, a couple of food food pellets put on it. I forgot what the stuff's called now. I'll put the name up on the screen but I just put um, three or four um, little blocks of it. But yeah, it's uh, certainly looking healthy. So that's the, uh, the Forsythia. Okay, so next is this uh, Potentilla. Um, again, this was, uh, actually no, this is a cutting. It's lovely purple flowers, they're uh, coming to the end of their time, but again, it's in a small pot, so I've enjoyed them. But now I want to uh, bring it back to shape, because the other thing that happens is, with all that foliage on there, the wind plays havoc with it. These deal really, really well with um, hard pruning. And all I'll do is just remove all the flower heads, um, anything low down here, and I'll take it right back to And again, these, they'll, um, they'll send out growth from all over it. flower there, I might let that flower go. Again, clean that inside. Just so we can see what's actually there. That's branch cleared up. What have we got? One, two. So we've got three coming from the same point. Um, <laughs> the front's probably there, which is in the wrong place for that. It's definitely not going to be the front. Oh, that could be the front actually. Don't know yet. I'm, I won't decide which one I'm pruning yet. We've got some um, some leaves curling up. I imagine there's a spider or a bug in there probably. So we'll get rid of that whole mess. Uh, right, that's a dead area there. And scary. With, with things here, they they grow so profusely. If it's anything that's looking a bit ill, I just get rid of it. Some new growth here, so we're going to go right back. Dead leaves in there, so we'll clean them out. Got three coming from there. I want that coming. Oh, I don't know. I need to know where the front's going to be. So I definitely have to lose some branches there. Let's just shorten the heights down now. Don't really want anything coming from there. Dead. I've got going up there. In fact, that's all dead. I'll just leave a stub here because no, that looks dead. Um, and that was where I was a bit premature removing something that was down here because the one that was there 
could have been trained out. Instead, we've got nothing there, but don't mind. The answer to this is to take out this center one. Much, oh, that's lovely. It's a much cleaner line. Um, and I'm tempted. Not sure about. Same, same issue is, exists there. Take out the central one. I may not allow that to keep going up, actually. What we're going to do here, oh, just take off the growing tip, take off a couple of the lowers. And we've got a right bit of chaos in here, which we need to sort out. That's something there, dead. Get rid of the central stem. Just clear the view path. And then you've got to start thinking if the tree's at this height, anything up here is a waste of time. So, uh, but I've got, right here, I've got three from the same point, but I want to declutter what's coming on the inside, so that will be the one that will go. Now we can get already straight and get a much better view of what's going on in there. And probably there, take it back to there, um, okay, I'm probably not going to do anything more than that, I mean you see what it was, um, but now with the size of the pot, I think that's, that's a lot better, can I say, that all started as a little potentilla cutting, interesting roots. Although, again, I've got some nice movement here. Don't really take to wiring, not when they get to this stage, to be fair. I do wire them when they're younger, younger branches. Uh, it's a bit of a mess there, but we'll leave that for now. Okay, so we'll go for the next one. Okay, this is, uh, again, very old uh, sycamore. Um, I've heard mixed reviews about people and their views on sycamore. Um, obviously you get this lovely big leaf, but I've actually, over the years, um, picked up quite a few little baby sycamores. Um, I've got a, a friend from, from the church, Howard Tune, hello Howard and Noreen, who uh, every year will um, bring in little baby sycamore saplings and uh, I just put them somewhere in the nursery beds, let them grow for a couple of years and then uh, put them in, in these little marmay pots. I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's an unusual thing I know because the last thing you think of a sycamore is it being a marmay plant because um, this thing wants to grow but this has been in this pot now for I think four years. Again important with something like this quite a uh, fast growing tree you repot it annually but all I do with these generally is you can see the bud I mean it's a lovely, lovely trunk line but there's buds coming in remove the lower ones have a look we've got a few of the green or black aphid on it yeah I gave them a spray a couple of days ago but yeah there's some stickiness on there so I hate that but it happens every year I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of these because what I want with these is these produce lovely lower leaves so I really do go to town take everything off um, because what I want is it to send out another flush and it will we will get these little leaves here um, so I'll leave a couple for the sake of growing but this is absolutely covered in aphids um, I mean, goodness, absolute aphid city. And what you'll get, um, well, you'll see this in another six weeks, and there'll be this lovely flush of really small leaves, about about half the size, and you'll, it'll look really tight and compact. 
um, so this is normally at its best um, around June time yeah, I've kept it in this form for a while those eight it's really bad so I'll give them a spray but yeah so that's a little sycamore in fact I've got a sycamore another sycamore somewhere else that I can show you the sort of size leaves you want I hate those aphids yeah so here's one again same thing it's st it's starting to go excuse me um, but this one I may get bigger I'm going to put that into a bigger pot next year bring it up this sort of height um, but the leaves that you're looking for will normally be about this come come the sort of June the second flush um, they normally sit around this sort of size and any that get too big I'll just remove but you get this lovely little silhouette of what is a very big leaf tree and look beautiful so yeah so I actually personally have a lot of success with sycamore I've experimented a while back got some red oak um, I bought 10 of them I, I went through a phase of buying these sort of two year saplings that you can get from the um, nursery stockers so I got a set of 10 Italian alder and red oak, crab apple, hawthorn, all that sort of stuff. The oaks have taken ages, I, I won't lie, these red oaks, but and this is again the stage when they're they can be really nice. Um, um, and, the, and this is an example of what happens if you um, if you start things off in pots really early on, you know, it's it's going to take ages for it to ever get some really big girth on it, but yeah, it's a little red oak. I've got say six of them really really love them um, and again I do the same principles I do with the um, sycamores when those leaves get really big and they really do they'll be like they can be this sort of size I'll take off the top two and I may leave one here one here and so one leaf will represent an entire entire pad yeah so yeah so anyway that's a red oak right this is the last one I'm just to show I've got to be quick because uh, it's the uh, RAF fighters that are going continually back and forth uh, doing low level flying which they love to do over my back garden. I used to think it's because they want to look at my bonsai but I don't think so. So another one of the unusual ones, I know we see them, it's not that unusual, is the ash. Um, and this is just the time of year when absolutely beautiful, the leaves haven't gone out too far, a bit like the dawn redwoods, they're just that stage where the, the, the uh, their compound leaves um, are in proportion and make sense with the uh, the design. So it's in a uh, uh, a Dawn Isaac um, again primitive primitive pot. I love that. I love the edging on this. Beautiful, beautiful little feet. The front. I haven't got the front right. I think it's because I was trying to sort the roots out. But the front is possibly somewhere around around there. It's got this lovely line here exposed, opened up. It's not going to be pruned, but I just thought I'd show it to you now because it's beautiful. And this, this I recovered, I don't know I've talked about it, I recovered it from a place that uh, does Christmas trees um, as a weed. He wanted me to get rid of them all. I can hear those jets on the way back, so we're basically just coming to the end. So all I'll do is I have a look at it. It's nice. This is where you have got a nice clear branch structure and definition happening I think it took me took me an hour and three quarters to recover this particular not particularly hard to grow um, and it all of the ones I tried to recover no particular technique no problem got them in, in November um, anyway um, from Xavier down the bottom of the garden um, I'll say uh, farewell um, I'm going to have a bit of lunch and this afternoon I've got some sorting out to do because uh, I've made progress apparently according to a good friend of mine um, as you well know from one of my earlier videos my wife Zita died over two years now um, still miss her, miss her a lot um, but there's that part of me that's saying it is time to start moving forwards and and the house is starting to to have more of my feel about it which is like smelly socks and, and mess and clutter. Uh, thankfully, I've got my children who uh, who keep all that in order. Um, but no, I um, finally said goodbye to the, the king-size bed, mainly because the mattress is so old and I found out how much it costs to get a new one. I thought, nope. So no, I've got a, a rather uh, compact single bed. 
and uh, duvet and I'm uh, putting an easy chair up there so that my kids don't have to put up with me nagging in my house and uh, I'm setting up the, uh, the well I've got a lot more space so I'm going to set it up and uh, start a doll's house project um, I don't know there was a magazine 20 oh gosh it's got to be at least 25 years ago um, and it's called my doll's house I think and you know the usual thing you pay three pounds a week and you get a bit of a doll's house or a bit of whatever it is and you've got to construct it well my wife was determined that's what she wanted to do and we've got I don't know, there's 125 parts that have been sitting around in a box for I don't know how long um, and I finally decided uh, let's go and start trying to build it so yeah that's what prompted the movement of stuff but yeah so yours truly is now in a, a single bed which I haven't been for huh, more than 30 years Anyway, I'm sure you're really interested to hear that, so ciao, and I wish you all the best, and happy bonsaiing from Expressions of Grace.